As a Blender user, you might be using render farms to speed up your workflow or to simply avoid overloading your machine or wasting your time. But what if I told you there is a render farm made specifically for Blender users and you can use it for free? In fact, thousands of Blender artists are using it every single day. So how does that work and is there a catch? The render farm I'm talking about is called Sheepit. It is a free, community-driven distributed rendering platform tailored specifically for Blender projects. The service traces its roots to 2007. Lauren Chloe, also known by the alias Cluclu, who developed a simple script to speed up his own Blender renders. He soon shared the idea with friends and put up a small website. He marked the launch of Sheepit in January 2008. Early on, Chloe partnered with Pierre Alar, who helped redesign and expand the website, and together they introduced Sheepit on Blender community forums. From these humble beginnings, Sheepit evolved significantly over the years. It remained a spare time, non commercial project for the founders, but the Blender community's response was enthusiastic to say the least. By early 2014, Sheepit had about 1,600 users and had rendered over a million frames. Later, Milestones followed in quick succession, 1 million frames by 2014, 10 million by 2016, and a whopping 40 million frames by 2017. Each milestone underscored rapid growth. For example, in 2012, it took a full year to render 200k frames, whereas by 2017, the farm could process that many frames in just two days. You see, the service's popularity and workload ballooned, prompting infrastructure upgrades and community fundraising. Notably, the Sheepit client was open sourced in 2014, and the server code was eventually opened up as well in 2025. Today, Sheepit is a mature and thriving platform. As of mid-2025, it has rendered actually over 460 million frames across more than 1 million projects, which is a lot to say the least. Now, how does Sheepit work? Sheepit functions as a distributed rendering system powered by the volunteer computers around the world. Users who need frames rendered, typically Blender animations or high resolution stills, upload their Blender project file to the Sheepit website, where it enters a set of render queue. The service automatically splits the job into discrete tasks, usually one task per animation frame or even tiles of a frame for still images. Each task is then sent out to be rendered on a different volunteer's machine. This way, an animation that might take one computer a hundred days, I mean to finish, can be completed in one day by a hundred computers working in parallel. On the contributor side, the process is straightforward. Anyone can contribute CPU and GPU power by running the Sheepit client. A new volunteer simply creates a Sheepit account, downloads the client, which is available for all major operating system platforms like Windows, Mac OS, Linux, and even as a Docker container. Then the user logs in. And here's the thing. No Blender installation is required. I mean on the contributor's machine. When the client connects, it automatically downloads the exact Blender version needed for the assigned project if it isn't already cached. The client then contacts the Sheepit server to request work and it is assigned a frame or title from someone's project. The project file or files are downloaded to the client, rendered in the background, and the finished frame is uploaded back to the server. The cycle repeats as long as the client is running, with the server intelligently scheduling tasks based on each machine's capabilities, taking into account available RAM, whether the volunteer has a strong GPU or just a CPU, and so on and so forth. On a side note, the volunteer's machine never directly communicates with other clients, so no peer-to-peer -peer swapping. All coordination is done through the central server for security and reliability, which I would say is a really important thing. Job submission for users who want their project rendered is handled through a web interface. After logging in, a user can upload a Blender file. They specify some parameters on the submission form. For example, which Blender version to use for rendering, the frame range if it is an animation, or mark it as a still single frame. Users can also choose 
what type of rendering they will need, whether it be just CPU, GPU, or both. And here's the interesting thing. The system even allows splitting a single frame into multiple files, so that many computers can render portions of a large image simultaneously. This is actually helpful for very high resolution stills, or to meet a tight deadline on a single frame. Once the project is added, it goes into the global queue. The Sheep scheduler will immediately start assigning its frames to volunteers' clients, prioritizing the project's turn based on the credit system, which we'll talk about later. As frames render, the results are sent back to the user, who can monitor the process live on the website, seeing which frames are done, previewing outputs, and even restarting any frames that seem to be taking too long or those that were rendered incorrectly. When all tasks are complete, the user can download a set of rendered frames or an assembled video if requested. The system also automatically purges old projects after about 9 days to free up some space, so users are advised to retrieve their output in a timely manner. A key ingredient in Sheep's design is its point-based priority queue, or the credit system. To ensure fairness in this give-and-take ecosystem, Sheepit awards points to users for contributing rendering power and deducts points when they use the farm to their own renders. In practice, this means if you help others by rendering frames on your computer, you accumulate points over time, and later, when you upload your own project, you spend some of those points for each frame that others render for you. So the more points you have, the higher priority your project gets in the queue relative to others. In fact, ordering the render queue is essentially sorted by points, with some new ones of course, to ensure new users aren't completely starved out of service. Everyone gets a small starting balance and very slow machines get special handling. You see, the credit mechanism creates a balance between rendering and consuming. Active contributors find their projects rendered faster, while those who only submit jobs but never volunteer will quickly run a points deficit and see their projects temporarily paused until they contribute some rendering back, which is very fair, I would say. By default, if you submit a project, your machine will render some of its frames first, effectively contributing to your job before taking the other's work. This helps users with a single PC get started without immediately going negative in points. The points formula is time-based. For example, rendering a frame for someone might earn you roughly 38 points per minute of render time, whereas having someone else render a frame for you costs 10 points per minute. These values scale with hardware. GPUs earn and spend points about 18 times faster than CPUs, reflecting their greater speed. Ship it is free, but what's the catch? You see, because Ship it relies on volunteers, the amount of available rendering power can fluctuate. There is no guaranteed minimum speed or wait time. If your project is low priority, meaning you haven't earned points yet, or you don't have as much, or if the farm is busy with many jobs, you might experience queue delays. In worst case scenarios, a project could sit in a queue for a while until enough resources free up. So unlike a dedicated commercial renter farm where a certain number of nodes are allocated on demand, Sheepit functions on priority in the queue and the availability of other machines. The service actually explicitly makes no promises when it comes to deadlines, so it is not advisable to rely on Sheepit when you have a very tight deadline looming in the horizon. One of the biggest limitations of Sheepit is that it is not suitable for proprietary, confidential, or client-sensitive projects. When you use Sheepit, your entire project file, including 3D models, textures, etc., are distributed to various strangers' computers, and any volunteer could potentially inspect those assets, or at least the resulting images. Even though the system tries to delete these files from volunteers after use, there is no absolute guarantee someone couldn't keep a copy. As the Sheepit team themselves cautioned, rendering work under a non-disclosure agreement, or NDA, or sensitive commercial project on a public volunteer farm is kind of risky. The data is transferred encrypted, but once it is on someone's machine, a knowledgeable and determined attacker could potentially retrieve it, which you have to think about. Moreover, thumbnails of rendered frames are visible on the website, 
and thus effectively public, which could be a spoiler and can cause leaking issues for confidential content. Because of this, studios and professionals with proprietary assets usually cannot use ShapeIt. Their client contracts or license agreements often forbid using cloud and community render services that aren't secure. The ShapeIt FAQ explicitly notes it is a community farm which is more suited for personal or open projects, so you have to keep that in mind. And it is not recommended for commercial use where privacy is a concern. Lastly, I'm going to talk about some few technical cons, which stem from its necessary restrictions. There is actually a project size limit. This means extremely large scenes with gigabytes of textures or geometry won't upload to the website. Many commercial farms don't have such low limits. They will happily let you upload dozens of gigabytes for a price, so Shipit might require extra optimization work for the users, like compressing textures or using linked assets. And if you're willing to go to that extent, I think this is not gonna be a problem. And there you have it guys. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up. Also, please subscribe to the channel to receive more videos like this. Thank you very much for watching and I will see you in the next one.